Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, September 24th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan wrote about an old fishing trick that he sees being resurrected. It used to be more common to specify the username and password for basic and digest authentication as part of the URL preceding the host names. Now, browsers stopped supporting this format, and uh, part of that was uh, phishing in addition to just not leaking credentials on the URL. But uh, as a result, another feature was no longer used, somewhat forgotten. While it's no longer possible to log in that way, the username and password, if you have them as part of the URL, well, it's just ignored. And this can be abused by phishing attacks to construct URL prefixes that make the URL more plausible to the victim. Jan is showing how this feature was abused in recent phishing emails that we received. In this particular case, a facebook.com prefix was constructed for an ipfs.io website that then turned out to be a phishing website for Facebook. A trick that, as Jan points out, may be worthwhile to mention in security awareness training, in particular just to demonstrate how difficult it sometimes can be to get the real destination of a URL just by casually observing it. Earlier this year, the U.S. government added Russian antivirus company Kaspersky to the entity list, essentially barring them from doing business in the U.S. Kaspersky, of course, had to close shop and close its offices in the U.S. And as part of the exit from the U.S., Kaspersky then entered an agreement with antivirus company Ultra AV to provide antivirus services to prior Kaspersky customers. Today, Kaspersky users then observed that Kaspersky's software auto-removed itself from their systems and instead the Ultra AV product was automatically installed, at least on the next reboot. Uh, But uh, there's a couple different reports here as to how this exactly happened. Uh, This automatic switch uh, caught these Kaspersky users by surprise. It wasn't really announced as sort of an automatic switch like this. More as an option that users of Kaspersky have if they want future updates. The ban on sales and updates for Kaspersky goes officially into effect end of September. So probably with about a week left, Kaspersky and Ultra AV decided to conclude the transaction and switch customers over to the new product. This, of course, caused quite a bit of confusion, in particular with Ultra AV not really being sort of a well-known antivirus company and uh, Ultra AV also in some cases apparently installed additional products like their VPN product. So it didn't just sort of one-to-one replace the Kaspersky antivirus product. In patches and vulnerabilities, we today have an interesting vulnerability in the Microchip Advanced Software Framework or ASF. ASF is a collection of embedded software for microchip flash microcontrollers. So this is flash memory that's sitting on the actual chip to hold software then for the CPU to execute. Uh, One component is a lightweight TCP IP stack that also includes support for not just TCP IP itself, but also DHCP, DNS, and other related protocols, essentially everything you need to get started with networking on a system like this. The stack-based overflow behind this vulnerability can be exploited by sending a crafted DHCP request. It's the tiny DHCP server that is affected by this particular vulnerability. And this vulnerability can be exploited all the way to remote code execution. The 
Code itself is commonly found on IoT devices and sadly no longer supported, so there will be no patch available. Luckily, well, it's DHCP. It requires a DHCP request, so it should be limited to the local network. But what makes things a little bit more interesting here is that this tiny DHCP component is also available separately on GitHub. And that GitHub project has been forked many, many times. And with that, the vulnerability ended up now in many other products and projects. So it will be a little bit hard to track down all the affected systems. Again, IoT is sort of the main location where you will find this vulnerable code. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.